everybody. How y'all doing today? Well, baby, if your name is Little Rod, you have completely blown up Diddy's spot. I know that I did a video about this earlier, but baby, I was reading off the blogs. Your girl went actually to the courthouse, so to speak, the digital courthouse, and got the full, full, full. This is an exhibit. Baby, this is 31 pages. This is what y'all said y'all wanted. This is what y'all said y'all needed, baby. Let's jump right into this because this is a lot. And when I say, you know, let me just say this, right? Before we get into the 31 page, I know what y'all saying. Y'all, you always be like, let's get into this. And then I go off on the tangent, but you got to hear this to understand really what's going on. Okay. Um, where are we at? Hold on y'all. Y'all got to understand what's going on. Okay, so first of all, where are the chats? I can't see y'all chats. Oh, here we go. Okay, I see y'all down. Okay, so everybody ready? Because this is good. Okay, so. <sighs> this is so much. Didn't lawyers have been doing this weird thing where they're trying to make this whole case about Little Rod's attorney? And I find it puzzling that some of my faves are feeding into it. I've had so, not so many people, just a handful of people being like, he needs to come with the facts, all these accusations and no facts. So what's y'all be like, not y'all, but the people in the back, are y'all dumb? Do you not know that Diddy's lawyers in my mind are trying to rewrite this? Accusations are what the complaint is. When you say, yo, you just stole something from me and I'm suing you, you take those accusations and you put them in front of a court of law so that the jury can decide whether your accusations are fact or not. Nobody goes and says, okay, did these attorneys once little Rod to drop his lawsuit, which they are acting like is an accusation, all because Diddy says he's innocent. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never heard anybody in the history of anywhere that's been accused of crimes like this to say, you got me. All right, you got me. I'm guilty. Little Rod, these aren't, see, Diddy's people are saying, oh, they're nothing but accusations. This isn't in the court. They have put it in front of the court. The attorney is writing letter after letter after letter after letter to the judge. They want this lawsuit dropped. Now, if they were so sure that little Rob was lying and all these lawyers are on retainer, so they're getting paid anyway, why wouldn't they go and take little Rob to court like he's fighting to go so they can prove he's a lie, lie, liar and destroy his reputation and make Diddy pay his legal fees? They don't want that. They are trying to use the court of public opinion to bully one weird thing they're doing, and this is the whole point. They've been saying, these are all lies. However, when you go in front of a court of law, you have to sign. What you can do to tell the judge is, I'm not lying. Everything I'm saying is true, and I have proof of this. How do you do that? You give a sworn declaration to the court saying, I swear that everything I'm saying is true and that I have evidence to back it up. Little Rod is trying to fight to go to court. Diddy's people are talking about, this is salacious. Go to court. Go to court. That's all you got to do. I find it odd they're even bringing up the history of Little Rod's attorney. He's shady. He's shysty. Sean Hawley, you just represented Tory Lanez. Where's Tory Lanez? You just represented Danny Masterman. Where's Danny Masterman? Jonathan Davis, you represented Little Wayne against industry insiders that he was being screwed over. Do you know that not only did the case get knocked down, but the appeal court kicked that out of the court? Every single look, like to actually say that because a lawyer lost a case for whatever reason, that they cut come up in front of a court of law. What about the hundreds of people of cases he won? What about the hundreds of people that he got justice? What about the cases before, um, in front of them, they come in at Little Rod, but he's representing a lot of Diddy's victims. He's representing a lot of Jane Doe's. Now, listen, I'm not telling y'all what to think. It's a free world. Do what you want. But y'all recognize game for what it is. We don't need coming with accusations. How are you parroting, right? What googly-eyed people that are being paid 
to kind of confuse the situation. That's what a complaint is. They are accusations that you bring in front of the court of law. You prove it's a complaint. You prove in front of a court of law that the accusations are either true or false. And then the judge rules on it, on whatever the punishment or whatever can be. I find it as funny as Diddy's lawyers trying to make it seem like Little Rod's attorneys, like, when in the world did it ever, did we start making attorneys, attorneys, the headlines, and we fall for it? Does anybody say anything about Gloria Allard? Every time she has a new uh, a client, she literally rents out the conference room at the Westin and sits her client down so they can cry into the camera. Bobby Sternum, y'all talking about, ooh, T.I. and Tiny. Ooh, she had to pay. Okay, so maybe the evidence wasn't there, right? But the attorney did what he had to do, which was believe his client and push forward, okay? Bobby Sternum, you talk about losing cases. He's won hundreds. Look at his record. Bobby Sternum. This is Diddy's big and bag lawyer. Who was your last client? Just say Maxwell. Where's he sitting? In jail. Because if we're talking about who's won cases, what cases have been thrown out. Jonathan Davis, you just lost the lawsuit with Lil Wayne. But we don't want to talk about that. Because all of y'all, everybody on Diddy's team is sitting there just losing cases. But maybe this is a good thing for Diddy. So when we talk about, oh my God, it looks like the lawyer has a shady past because of one case that went sideways, that the lawyer did everything he was supposed to do. Okay, the judge didn't believe him. I do want to say it happened in Atlanta. Anybody knows anything about Atlanta legal? I mean, this ain't any shade, but look what's going on with Fannie Willis. Atlanta be doing what they want. They be doing what they want, the rules. If you got clout, if you got name, if you are the unofficial mayor of Atlanta, I don't know. I think people, I don't know. Do with it what you will. But anyway, let's get into this 31 cage complaint because Little Rod said, y'all want to call me a liar? Y'all want to say I'm being salacious? Y'all want to talk about this is nothing but lies? And mind you, Diddy's people can actually submit proof to the court too, just like Little Rod did. And they can do go move for a motion to dismiss. Y'all realize that exists, right? Instead of them leaking shit to bloggers and want to be a uh, 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 Twitter news correspondents, no shade to bloggers or Twitter, right? No shade, but instead of leaking it to people that are paid off and got agendas, in my opinion, y'all don't got to do any of that. All Diddy's team has to do is go in front of the judge and do a motion to dismiss. I believe it is a 12 6.6B or a 12B. It's a summary motion to dismiss in federal court. All they have to do is they don't even have to go to court. They don't have to go to trial. They just do a summary motion to dismiss. They put their evidence on why everything Little Rod is saying is a lie 100%. They submit it to the court. The court will dismiss the lawsuit right now. And if so be, make them pay lawyer fees. So ask yourself, why TMZ, why fake legal correspondents that never took a law class and literally just lucked out because black Twitter rallied around them for no reason. Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why. Through all this mess, just ask yourself why. Let me put myself on uh, the big screen because this is a very special uh, uh, announcement. Ask yourself why, right? Ask yourself why they have not moved for a 12, I think it's either 12B or 12.6B, a summary motion to dismiss. This can all go away. They won't and they can't because I don't think they have anything. And I think the whole thing is to start leaking stuff. Did you hear about his lawyer? His lawyer lost the case. Oh, <gasps> qual surprise. A lawyer lost an MF in case? Yes, half of Diddy's crew that he hired He's probably paying the millions, all lost their last cases horribly. But nobody's talking about that, right? They won't make a motion to dismiss, but they deepen TMZ. They deepen the blogs. They deep leak and stuff. They got everybody whispering, whispering, whispering. But the things they can do to actually make this lawsuit go poof, the moose, they refuse to do. Y'all don't buy into this media nonsense. They have a remedy set out by. 
They have a remedy set out by the U.S. government to make this all go away. But they can't use that remedy. Ain't that funny? But yet, there's all these, ooh, a lawyer's pass. What was a lawyer's pass? He lost a case. Grow up. Every lawyer's lost a case. Why don't we talk about the hundreds of cases he won? Why don't we talk about the way, as much as people say, uh, 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 the feds ain't talking a little rod. That Why are y'all listening to TMZ when y'all know TMZ and Sean Hawley is like this? How can the feds have not talked a little rod when little Rod's lawsuit was served a day before the raid and little Rod's amended lawsuit that the lawyers are fighting to be like, no, 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 he can't amend, has everything in there that the feds were looking for. Y'all got to like, not y'all, but the people in the back, you got to stop just listening to what people tell you, even me. Don't believe me. Go do your own research. Go do your own research. But the fact that they are trying to spit in our faces and tell us it's raining, we want to talk about lawyers' records. We want to talk about losing case. Sean Hawley, Tory Lanez would like a word with you, which thank God you were Tory Lanez's lawyer because I'm happy he got put away, right? Um, Danny Masterman, Tory Lanez, would, I'm sorry, Sean Hawley, Danny Masterman would like a word with you. Jonathan Davis, the main one selling what tickets? Little Wayne would like a word with you. Didn't you lose his case very badly? And y'all took it to a pill and the pill court was like, what are y'all talking about? Ain't no basis. Right? Who else? Bobby Sternum. Osama bin Laden's right-hand man, the person that blew up the Heathrow Airport. And also, let it also not forget, just saying Maxwell, well, like a word with you. All y'all. Who's the other guy that's um, representing, I can't ever forget his name, the new lawyer that just came on the team that represented Alec Baldwin in Rust. Why did this get re-picked up? Because they volunteered cell phones, which actually gave the prosecutors evidence. And now Alec Baldwin is having to go to trial over this. Do you want to talk about that? Because we don't got to dig back. To T.I. Tiny, Sabrina Peterson, which when I read the case, yeah, I think she had a bigger case. But that's just my point. But even then, okay, so he got that one loss. Y'all got many. What, like, what? Uh, 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 uh. That's what lawyers do. You win some, you lose some. Diddy knows the mark of a good lawyer isn't how many cases they lost. It's how many cases they can win for you. And I just want to point out that little Rod's attorney, Tyrone A. Blackburn, has won many, many cases. But again, you guys, why are we having a conversation where somebody, and I'm going to, I know what you're saying, Tisa, because you having it. Let's get into this 31 page confession. Why are we having a whole conversation, right? Over who the lawyer is and whether little Rod's lawsuit or not might be bullshit. When the, fe listen, when the federal government raided Diddy's house, military, full metal jacket, Final Fantasy, Call of Duty 4, rated it military style to the point of even Diddy's like, we ain't never seen nothing like this. For the same things that Little Rob been saying happened, and it's salacious. I don't want to say that also Little Rod is a young black attorney. Um, the law is very elitist. And at the end of the day, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Do with that what you want. But it makes me sad that there are a lot of people that's feeding into that mess. Anyway, but do what you have, right? Um, Listen, let's also not forget that it looks like Diddy, and rumored to be J-Lo, is paying for everybody's lawyer. Miami, her cousin, Daphne, Jade, his kids, his mom, Stevie J, his security, accountants from past years, witnesses from past years, his staff, and other people that were at the free calls? Woo! Now, some people said, why wouldn't he just have paid off Little Rod? Why didn't he pay off Cassie? Because if he had not paid off Cassie, this wouldn't happen. I find it odd that nobody, like, now we getting into how many cases a lawyer won in order, which he won a lot, in order to be able to be an authoritative person. Well, now you got to like, what, have 20 years as a lawyer, 50 years in order to represent someone? Do y'all hear what y'all are saying? The fact that some people don't realize Diddy's team saying, these are just accusations because you don't know he's in front of a court of law begging Diddy to step into the ring. Diddy's the people. Anyway, y'all, 
let's get into this because baby, there is a full 31 page confession. Woo. Let's get to the fun stuff. Diddy was sitting there and the lawyers were doing all this stuff. And Tyrone A. Blackburn said, oh, I'm going to give you what you want. You want to talk about lies? How about I'll sign a sworn declaration and give evidence of what's going on? Now, I know there's a recording, but baby, he included pictures. And he stands 10 toes down on the blank workers. And baby, he knows where all the bodies are buried. I know you probably heard it on the blogs and read a little bit about it on All Hip Hop. Baby, we got the full 31-page exhibit of all the evidence. And baby, he mapped it out word by word by word by word by word. Baby, you know that old saying. When I saw this, it's exhibit B. Funny how none of these bloggers can find these exhibits, even though they literally are on the courthouse. Right? Funny how you only find this shit that makes Diddy team look like they powerful and they doing this. I mean, Little Rod's attorney look like a con artist when even the federal government is backing them up. And yes, I have heard that Little Rod did, in fact, talk to the feds. It'd be stupid to think he didn't. <laughs> anyway, right? Um, They said, OK, we're going to give you all 31 pages of all the evidence we have word by word by word. Diddy, it's your move. And last I've seen, Diddy been sitting on silent, just like they've been sitting on silent about that little thing with Christian. You notice they ain't saying nothing about what happened with Christian, nothing about the audio, nothing about this, nothing about that, just leaking to like, who? Who? Really? But you can go in front of a court of law and say, this is preposterous, but they won't open their mouths to the judge because they know. They know. Okay, anyway, let's get into this. All right. Y'all ready for this? Uh, uh, uh. Let me read these super chats really quick before we get into this 31 page confession. It reminds me of what my dad said, right? You got what you asked for, but not what you wanted. And this is what this reminds me of. Little Rod gave Diddy what he want, gave Diddy's lawyers what they asked for, but this damn sure ain't what they wanted. Oof. Be careful what you wish for. All right, let's get into this. All right. Um, Oh, also, Dr. Payne Nestor. What's going on? She said, member for 31 months, level Tattletales fam. Oh, thank you, Dr. Payne. I appreciate that. All right, listen. Oh, also, Angel, who's this? Uh, Angel Bionic Bullies. Okay, just became a member. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Also, Becky. Becky, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that, Mama. Also, Lady Shia. Lady Shia said, hey, Tisa, our fam, our chat family need a name. What's your name, Noah? I like Tattletales, but listen, I'm just one voice in the sea of many. Let's get a new name, y'all. All like, what's the chat family? Um, the little raw riders. No, that, that bite. <laughs> Did he gonna be like, I want to join <laughs> Justice League? Well, everybody says that. I guess that's a little corny. Um, also, who's this? Uh, Arium said, Hey, Tisa, it's Tisa time. You guys grab your teacups and hit the like button. All right, you guys. Also, I'm about to get into this. It's 31 pages. You know, I'm gonna give y'all the dramatic reading. Can y'all please hit that like button so more people can actually see this live? Lisa Hart also said, Um, Lisa Hart said, yes, thank you for becoming an MVP. Oh, you got money, money. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, here's the thing. Rebecca makes a good point. She said, I assume those trying to tear down Tyrone are probably professional trolls being paid. By. True, but it, it, it strikes me just how much bloggers and Twitter people, and again, everybody can think what they want to think at the end of the day. We all want justice, but there's just being led astray, which makes me think maybe they're not the only ones. No. Nah. They the only ones not being paid. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Mimi. Said, well, duh. Also, where is Kate? That's right. Kate, 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 Kate. Where is she? Them damn kids, child. Anywho. <laughs> thank you so much, Mimi. That sounds like me and my bestie talking. And by the way, also, Kim Carter says, um, Kim Carter said, member for two months. That's right. Said, uh, want me to send a super chat. What's up? What's up, Kim? How you doing? Welcome, everybody. Okay, are we done with the chats for now? We going, oh, Derek. Derek uh, Antonio just became a member. Thank you so much. Y'all are blessing me. You guys, also, if you could hit that like button. Uh, oh, Tisa Tattlers. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like that. Tisa Tatlers. Okay. Shadow said Tisa T, 1.5 cups of water, 5 grams of drama, 10 millimeters of truth serum, 15 millimeters of shock. Leave it. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Let's get into it. Betty, uh, Betty Booty Baby, thank you so much. The Tattletail Crew. Shout out to the Tattletail Crew. Um, Primo said, just saw the newest episode of Suge Knight Podcast. Uh, oh, they're saying Snoop Dogg is possibly the one that set up Tupac with Reggie Wright. Listen, that whole thing. Listen, one tragedy at a time. Let's get into this, all right? Again, Rodney has entered a sworn declaration to court. Do you know what this means? He's accusations, which are also accusations until it's proven in court of law. This allows them to not only go after him for uh, money, attorney fees, but also to press for criminal time if he is lying and also perjury, but even jail time if he is lying. By Rodney entering this declaration, he is say, he is literally on some Lord of the Rings Gandalf. You shall not pass. He's letting us know. I'm standing 10 toes down on this. Diddy the balls in your court. Again, let's get into this. He said, I, Rodney Jones, this is a confession. Declare according to uh, uh, USC chapter 28 USC, US uh, 1746. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I have personal knowledge of the facts set forth herein, which I know to be true and correct, and have called upon to testify as a witness, I could and would competently testify thereto. Now, that's just standard language. Baby, just, we starting off slow because, baby, this is juicy. It's 31 pages. I guarantee you haven't read about this on the blogs. Around August 22nd, I received a call from uh, Sean Combs and his assistant, Frankie Centella, requesting I produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album tie, tie, titled The Love Album. Now, how much you want to bet Diddy was going through uh, Little Rod's Instagram feed talking about, stuff. oh, yeah, oh, that going to work. Oh, Frankie, call up. What's this man's name? Rodney. Yeah, Little Rod, we going to see. Anyway, before this conversation, I was invited to Diddy's house on 2021 to produce on another project. Oh, he saw Little Rod and said, mm, he a baddie in real life. I got to have that. On September 20, uh, 2022 to November 2023, I produced nine songs on Diddy's Love Album. I also played several instruments on a few other songs as well. For two weeks in October 2022, I worked at Diddy's Enterprise and Diddy's Global Offices in West Hollywood training engineers. I lived with Diddy for months at a time, spending holidays and birthdays with him and missing major family events. He was very demanding and would often deny my request to go home. I lived in Diddy's residence in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. I also spent several weeks on a yacht he rented in St. Bartholomew, uh, St. St. Martin, and Virgin Islands. Now, listen, this is an aside. Baby, we we're on seven. We got 2,000 more to go. Just let's take it slow. He lived in the Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida home. Do you think Rod was probably drawing di diagrams on napkins to the feds about how to swoop into Diddy's house? Because where do you think they got that information? I don't know. I know Diddy is believing TMZ about, did you talk to the feds um, when they questioned little Rod? If, I would not believe. Of course he talked to them. Of course. While living with and working with Diddy, I witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond my role as producer on the Love album. I have hundreds of hours of audio and video recordings and photos of incidents that I detail in my first and proposed second amended complaints. He is saying to the court, under penalty of perjury, jail, and having to pay everybody's legal fees, he has proof. What's Diddy's team's doing? Leaking to blogs? He's a liar. Are you going to give any proof? Anyway, right? Um... Did he require that I record him constantly? He did not like to repeat himself, and I quickly learned that from observing him lose his temper with his staff and family if they failed to remember something he said a day or two prior. On several occasions, Diddy took my cell phone and began recording himself. 
oh, the devil will make you undo yourself. While creating the Love album, I was required to work out of several studios. The first studio where I produced music was Chalice Recording Studios in California. We were supposed to work out of Chalice Recording Studios for a few weeks, but that quickly turned into a few months. In addition to Chalice Recording Studios, I worked out of Diddy's homes located, and he gives the addresses, I don't want to dox, on December 23rd, 2022 to January 4th, 2023, I worked on the Love album from a recording studio Diddy set up on the yacht he rented in St. Bartholomew, St. Martin and Virgin Islands. Now, mind you, right? Let me put some evidence on here. Mind you, if you guys don't remember, that girl, Gracie, that works on the yacht, right? She said that little rot, this is a sworn declaration, declaration of Rodney Jones. Let me just put this on the summer grand screen. Oops, wrong. There we go. Sworn declaration of Rodney Jones. Again, has Diddy at all responded to this? Has he? I don't know. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, now, interesting enough, in this thing, he says that he worked on the yacht. Some people said that Little Rod is a liar and he was not there. However, he included numerous, if I can figure out how to work this mess. However, he included numerous things as well as plane tickets to prove that he actually was on the yacht. We're going to get to these pictures in one second. Just give me one second, okay? He sent the plane ticket to prove that not only was he on the yacht, this plane ticket says American Airlines, um, on Friday, December 23rd, uh, he went from Chicago and landed in St. Martin. He had a layover in Charlotte, New North Carolina, baby. He is bringing all of the receipts for us to see. Right now, let me put this on the large screen. Here you go with the plane ticket. So those people saying that he was never there on the yacht and he was lying about being there or anything with Christian, he has proof. That not only was he there, he was Diddy's employee. Diddy flew him out. Small detail, but one that when you get into Little Rod and everybody calling him a liar, one that makes a big difference. But let's keep going, shall we? Because, baby, we haven't gotten to the juice. This is just the, the upper teeth, if you will. I witnessed the accusation, use, and distribution of E, Colombian camps, uh, dancing debts, GHB, Special K, Mary Jane and Shrooms. I witnessed Diddy display and distribute unregistered illegal firearms. Isn't it interesting that the feds in their raid, the sources have said that they have found illegal, uh, unregistered firearms. I witnessed Diddy provide laced, uh, Blake, be, lace alcoholic beverages to mayors and blank workers at his homes in California, New York, Virgin Islands, and Florida. Now, a lot of people are like, how are you going to prove they were to S workers? We're just friends enjoying each other's company. First of all, to the monthly ones, you better hope you reported those anonymous wire transfers to the IRS and that you have an actual work history of support because the feds are already on you and they're already on the text messages about when you were coming. You're a personal trainer, but you only work during free calls and then you went home, maybe. But also, let's also not forget that Little Rod alleges in his original lawsuit that he knows they're blank workers from the pictures he has because Diddy sent him out to hire these girls at the booby trap. <laughs> exactly. And then he took pictures of the girls he hired. That means that the feds also took bank document, documents and all this stuff. That means that they have the purchase amount for these girls to be there. Right. But I'm sure they only came out to talk. Right. They only wanted to talk. Let's continue. Right. Because we got to get to the meat of this to get into it. And they added even more pictures this time around. Da -da 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 -da. I witnessed Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Calm, KK, instruct the staff to retrieve blanks so she could provide them to Diddy for his consumption. I witnessed Christian Calm's rug and blankly assault a stewardess while we were on the yacht Diddy rented in St. Bartholomew, St. Martin, and Virgin Islands. The assault began in the makeshift studio of the yacht while I was recording Christian auto-tuning rapping. 
So he just admitted right now, and this is new information. <laughs> this First of all, he said, why well, I was recording Christian Combs auto tunes rapping. <laughs> First of all, he said Christian Combs shaded him that Christian Combs is um, uh, talentless because he got an auto-tune rapping. But also he lets us know that the reason he was able to record that woman, Gracie, get assaulted is because Christian wanted to rap over me and you. And something about Cassie's song made him want to go after that girl. And he decided to go after that girl while little Rod was in the room. Again, these people knew no limits. So not only did he witness, but he taped it. And he also taped the girl trying to get away. Yeah, you notice that his team been mighty quiet about the mess that's going on with Christian. Where's Misa posting pictures of a lioness? Rawr! How dare you? Two black men. Maybe that's why they dog walk Christian out backwards with a Glock to the back of his head because they know that Christian is in deep. And if Christian's in deep, is Justin too? Again, I do want to say Diddy maintains his innocence. Christian, I don't think has commented. I'm sure when he will comment, he's going to maintain his innocence too. But Little Rod has, so y'all wanted it. Y'all said, eh, these accusations. Little Rod, um, Little Rod has, uh, signed a sworn declaration and submitted it to the court. This page is 30. This isn't the lawsuit. This is an exhibit that was admitted in the court. 31 pages saying I doubled down on what I said under penalty of perjury. You can send me the jail. They can get so much stuff against little Rod. He won't see the sunlight again if he's lying. Now I will say, does little Rod seem crazy to you? Does he? He don't seem crazy to me. It seems like what he's been saying from the beginning, that he has all this information, is true. On many mornings while on the yacht with Diddy, I worked out alongside him in the gym. I have videos of Diddy and me working out on the treadmill with T.D. Jakes playing on the monitor. We watched T.D. Jakes' serums every morning during our workouts. At first, I thought it was admirable that Diddy listened to sermons while working out because Little Rock comes from a very, very Christian family. Until I realized he was not studying the message. He was studying the messenger's mannerisms. During our gym session, he detailed how he planned to leverage his relationship with T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's pending lawsuit. This is before Cassie even, it became public. If you guys don't know, around the first of 2000, the first quarter of 2023, somewhere January, February, March, Cassie actually served Diddy. That is where, oddly enough, Jay-Z decided to cancel Made in America for the first time. So funny now, Little Rod's lawsuit and that raid, right? Well, I'm sorry, Little Rod's lawsuit, they canceled the Grammy party that Diddy usually is like the honorary co-host. So funny now, the feds raided and now they canceled Made in America for the second year in a row. There's been a lot of uh, uh, rumors that Diddy is washing money for nefarious criminal enterprises. I hope Jay-Z didn't get involved in that. The shooting. They said... This is more info on Chalice Recruiting. On September 11, 2022, Diddy held a writer's producer's camp at Chalice Recording Studio on Highland Ave. Over 100 producers, songwriters, and other creatives attended the camp. We all know this. Uh, from Now he's giving us more information on who G is. They said Diddy, Justin, and Justin's friend G were also present. From my understanding, G was approximately 30 years old at the time. He is an African-American male and is much taller than me. While at the camp, I was required to work, work outside the Studio A in the lounge area. On the early morning of September 12, 2022, at approximately 3 to 4 o'clock a.m. during this camp, Diddy, Justin, and G were in a heated conversation. We are getting all the drama. Hold on really quick, guys. Hold on. Okay. We're getting details. Everybody wanted details. This is what the court has. I'm waiting for D Diddy to give any information as to the contrary. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where I was sitting. So now we have more information from this declaration they just submitted. The uh, this argument actually started in the studio. G was in the studio. Now, here's the important thing. If the argument started in the studio, 
it makes me wonder since little rod records everything that happens in the studio there's actually audio of g arguing in the studio with justin why is that important because Sean Holly and Chalice Studio tried to be like, oh, no, 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 no. He got shot like my, like blocks away. But Little Rod saying y'all are lying. It happened in the studio. If it happened in the studio, it means the LAPD um, covered up for y'all. Okay. I was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when I heard gunshots. Not one, but gunshots. I recall hearing multiple. I immediately went into a stake of shock and feared I would or could be shot next. Okay. That is pretty rational. A crowd gathered. So it wasn't just him. Because a lot of people are like, that don't even make sense. Again, he's giving this information to the judge. This declaration is sworn testimony that he says he will back up in a court of law with evidence. I gathered, uh, and he's doing this line by line by line. A crowd gathered around the restroom. So it wasn't just him that heard it. When the door finally opened, Diddy and Justin exited. Side note, does anybody know who Justin's girlfriend is ever? Because I've been hearing things about Justin. You know what? I don't want to get sued. I'm going to leave it at that. But Diddy was running some of his pappy's businesses and not the ones that are above board. G was lying. He said, so Justin and Diddy left. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his torso and bleeding out from what I believe was somewhere near his leg and hip area. Everyone stood around looking at G and nobody was trying to help him. I was very frustrated by the lack of aid G was receiving and I was determined not to let him die on my watch. I dropped everything I was doing ran to G and immediately began placing pressure on his gunshot wounds. As I was applying pressure to his first wound, I realized that G was gushing, gushing from another area in his leg hip. So I decided to lift G and place him on the toilet. I asked the crowd to call the ambulance. I picked G up and brought him to the front of the studio where I believed the ambulance would be. Unfortunately, when I arrived at the front of the studio, I was told the ambulance was at the end of the block and refused to come to the studio out of fear there was an active shooting. Y'all, there is evidence of all of this. I had to run to, and this is all new information. He's filling in the blanks since Diddy's lawyers want to call him a liar and they want to try this out in public court. Baby, let's do it, okay? I had to run to the ambulance and inform and convince them that it was safe for them to come to the studio. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. It's my mom. Hey, can I give you a call back? I'm on live. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. So. Okay. At this time, Diddy and Justin disappeared to Studio G across the parking lot from Studio A. So the argument started in Studio A. They went to the bathroom. Bang, bang, bang. Everyone's in a state of shock. Little Rod is trying, like literally, this is something out of a movie. This ambulance wouldn't come onto the lot because they thought it was still an active shooting. He had to go and run down the street, blood everywhere, to convince the ambulance to come in two, Diddy and Justin went to Studio G. Diddy gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced me to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Now, oddly enough, this is what Diddy told them to tell the police. Sean Hawley, Diddy's lawyer, since y'all want to talk about lawyers, said that it happened blocks away. Chalice Studio said it happened a block and a half away. Sean Hawley, I believe, said it happened three blocks away. I have the video of the restroom where G was located, and it clearly shows all the blood that G lost as a result of being shot. Mind you, he was shot in the abdominal and through the hip and air area. Chalice Studios and Sean Hawley wants to let us think that a man that was shot in the stomach and the leg, hip leg area, walked three blocks gushing blood, walk to the front of Chalice Studios. If you guys don't know, when you get to Chalice Studios, 
because they're always paranoid about that. You can't even walk straight to the door. You have to be buzzed in with the security camera to ask to come on the grounds. Then once you come on the grounds, you have to walk to the front door, ask to be buzzed in again. Security's looking down on you. Then when you get in, there's nothing but a secretary sitting behind bulletproof glass. You then have to tell them what session you're with. They call back to the session, get permission, get your ID and stuff, get permission to let you back. Then they buzz you in, you walk in. There is a huge lounge sitting area, right? You walk past that. Then you see Studio A and you see Studio B. You walk past that. There is a kitchen area. And you walk past that and there is a bathroom area. They're trying to say, right? They're trying to say that a man walked three blocks, shot like that, walked in, got buzzed in, went through all that security just so they could bleed out. Yeah, okay. All right. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway. Um, I have several writer camp attendees who are willing to provide the court with a sworn statement corroborating what I witnessed and experienced at Chalice Recording Studios. He is also telling the court under penalty of perjury. This is him swearing to God to the court. A sworn declaration is testimony. They can, again, do all this stuff. What he experienced and witnessed at the recording studio. Now. What's Diddy, what, what's Diddy's camp got to say? Oh, but his lawyer lost the case. Baby, y'all all lost cases. So, okay. Anyway, now he goes into uh, the next thing. Blank workers. Oh, he also put up a photo. Let me put this on the screen. He also has a photo of this. He put this in evidence. Let me put this on a big screen. He said that this photo, this is actually included in court evidence. Again, this is new evidence. This, it was not included in the original uh, filing. This, a lot of this is new information. He's adding meat to the bones of what he put in that complaint. He said this photo was taken shortly before the shooting. It was taken shortly before the shooting. Again, Chalice Recording Studios. Remember how Ethiopia Haberman was like, what are you talking about? I've only been in the studio with Diddy, trying to make it seem like studios in Diddy's house are so professional. Studios is where half the mess happens because Diddy likes that mess. Okay, let's get into this. Now he's moving on to, it's Christmas time. Now he's moving on to blank workers, parties, and excessive drug use. They said Diddy converted the parking lot at Chalice Recording Studios into a makeshift nightclub. He had everything imaginable there, including a full service bar, a massage spa, and a hookah. You think that's where Daphne was working? <laughs> Every evening, Diddy would host a party called Club Love, and there would be all the attendees of the writer's camp, the artists, and the record label executives. In addition to Club Love, right? And he said, Record label executives. As much as UMG is like, how dare you? There's proof. Anyway, in addition to Club Love, Diddy required everyone working on the I Love album to take lace shots of De Leon tequila. There was no way to tell him no. Diddy felt anyone who refused to drink with him was suspicious and untrustworthy. So he was already testing to see who was feds, who was going to snitch. You couldn't stay around him without drinking the laced tequila. At the time, I did not realize that he used to lace the shots of alcohol to obtain and maintain control over the person consuming the alcohol. So what Little Rod is now saying is, okay, I didn't know that it was laced. However, anyone that wouldn't take a shot of daily on tequila, did he again, uh, was suspicious of and untrustworthy. Diddy was not the only person who pressured everyone to take shots. His chief of staff, KK, and her direct reporters, DeForest Taylor, Frankie Santella, and a &R for Love Records, Brendan Paul, and Moy Bond did so as well. Throughout the duration of his time living with Diddy, I personally witnessed Diddy order his staff to bring him rugs and blank workers. This was common. And he was never told no. On several occasions while in Miami, I was required to order blank workers from blank clubs 
in Miami, Florida. I would have to send the blank workers Ubers to Diddy's property located on Two Star Island in Miami, Florida. I'm possession of many Uber receipts. He's in, he's in possession of Uber receipts, you guys. He has Uber receipts. On several occasions, I witnessed Brendan Paul, that is the man that the feds actually arrested for possession and charged him with possession of Colombian dancing dust and Colombian dancing dust laced gummies. And this is what Little Rod, he says, I witnessed Brendan Paul pack Coca, Tusi, E, Mary Jane, lace candies with marijuana and other substances in his carry-on luggage whenever we had to travel internationally or to other states. Throughout my time with Diddy, I was transported from California to New York, St. Bartholomew and Virgin. During this time, I was forced to solicit blank workers and perform blank acts to the pleasure of Diddy. Unbeknownst to me, Diddy had hidden cameras and audio devices in all the rooms of his home. I only discovered this several months into living with him when I had to pick up my Uber Eats delivery from the security office. Usually the security would bring my food deliveries to me whenever I was at Diddy's home. But at this point, I was close and familiar with the security. So they called me to their room and told me to go in and retrieve the food myself. I saw a four to six, I saw four to six large flat screen television monitors at the time. Each monitor had at least 20 to 30 little screens in them. Each screen was a view of the room in and surrounding Diddy's home. You guys, Diddy's camp is trying to act like this is normal. You got four to six large flat screen TVs. Each monitor has 20 to 30 different scenes going on. So each monitor showed 20 to different to 20 to 30 uh, cameras monitoring rooms. Each screen has a view of the room in and surrounding Diddy's homes. On the following occasions, I was forced to solicit different blank workers and bring them to Star Island. Listen to the dates he gave. November 29, 2022. November 30, 2022. Uh, December 1, 2022. December 2, 2022. December 3rd. December 6th. January 26th, because they was in uh, St. Martin's in those days in between. January 27th, January 28th, uh, 2023, January 29th, January 30th, January 31st, the, uh, February 1st, February 2nd, February 4th, February 5th, February 8th, February 9th, April 1st, April 4th. He likes doing uh, freak offs at the beginning of the month. It gets new words to the thing. Wake up, wake up. It's the first of the month. So get up and pizza. Okay, anyway, right? Um, four, four, five, 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 six, five, seven, and five, eight, 2023. Um, hold on really quick, you guys. I just got it. Well, you know what? I'll change it later. No, I actually want to change it now. Uh, one second. Can I change it now? I just want to put in little, because listen, let's see. One second. Diddy. One second. Oh my gosh. The challenges. Okay, so anyway, let's keep going. I just changed the title. Sorry I made you guys sit through that, but you had to. Okay, anyway, for example, on July 2nd, 2023, Diddy had a listening party at his California home. There were a lot of people present for this party, including Chris Brown, Justin Combs, blank workers and underage girls. Justin would typically bring the younger women to these parties. I had two videos of two different blank workers that Justin Combs bought with him to Chalice Recording Studios. I can provide the videos to the court. 
Does the event begin at seven? Did he request that female blank workers and required me to solicit them? An hour later, several blank workers appeared. In addition to blank workers, there were at least five women in the crowd who appeared to be under the age of oh, 16. Diddy forced all the attendees to drink the lace daily on liquor. I believe Diddy laced the liquor with E. I personally witnessed his staff members, Brendan Paul and Moy Bond, lace alcohol with E. The presence of what I perceive, the presence of what I perceived to be underage women made me very uncomfortable. I attempted to leave and Diddy forced me to stay. I had my car keys in my book bag. I've never lost my car keys, and Diddy went so far as to take my car keys to prevent me from leaving. After being forced to drink daily on shots, I began feeling lightheaded and I passed out. I remember waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning, naked with a blank worker sleeping next to me. On February 2nd, Diddy blinked, well, he said rugged me. I remember waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. I was in bed with two workers and Diddy. I recall aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. I have photos of the blank workers sleeping on the bed the morning after. I can provide it to the court as necessary. I know Ty Bro and Brackburn was like, I, I, a, a, a Sean Holly said what? A Jonathan Davis said what? A what? A Diddy said what? I know he is sitting there being like, y'all can't be it. Now I see why they're just taking the thing where they're like, let them keep talking because, baby, the court of public opinion ain't going to save you at all. He said, Diddy offered me Colombian dancing desks on Thanksgiving night. Damn, on Thanksgiving? Diddy, uh, at Diddy's home in Miami, he asked me and DeForest Taylor to enter the bathroom in his studio. He asked us for a $100 bill because he wanted us to do Colombian dancing desks with him. I was definitely afraid. I would have been too. Luckily, I did not have a $100 bill. Diddy waited a little later to do co uh, Colombian dancing desk with Young Miami. On different occasions, Diddy often required me to solicit blank workers from the booby trap on the river. They gave the address, 3615 Northwest South River Drive, Miami. I did this. I did as he asked, and Diddy forced me to engage in unsolicited blank acts with these workers. Diddy personally trained me on how to solicit blank workers from the booby trap on the river. I have a recording of that evening and provide <laughs> can provide it to the court. In addition to providing me with training, Diddy gave me an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required me to wear it to the booby trap on the river as a signal to any blank worker I approached that Diddy was in town and had sent me to recruit them. Mm. He said he didn't want to visit booby trap on the river. I had no desire to solicit blank workers from them. Diddy used his power and influence to intimidate and force me to do it. He going down. Unbeknownst to me, these workers were, accom were accustomed to servicing Diddy and would know he was in town by the sight of the bad boys baseball, bad boys baseball cap. No, this is going to be easy. The feds are just going to subpoena those girls and make them testify. Are they going to be sitting in jail? Um, Diddy promised me many things to entice me to continue engaging in bl his blank trafficking operation. Y'all know he promised uh, 250000 all the instruments he wanted, ownership of this property, ah, da, 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 da. He promised to give me access to record label executives like Lucian Grange and Ethiopia. On multiple occasions, Diddy hosted parties at his home in LA and Miami. Many music label executives from Universal Music Group and Motown Records were present. Some of the other organizations uh, represented were Apple Music and Spotify, who were at Diddy's home in April 2023 for the listening party and the after a party. He goes into the stuff with young Miami's cousin. Um, uh, oh, did he, did he use my admiration for producer Stevie J to groom me into accepting blank? I have nothing against individuals who are members of the LGBTQ community. I have family members, friends, da 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 da. I'm hetero male, and I made the point very clear to Diddy. Diddy would always do things to convert and, and covert in overt ways to see if I'm open to having blank with them, aside from physically assaulting me, uh, groping my private parts. Uh, Diddy showed me a video of uh, Stephen Aaron. <laughs> They gave Stevie G's Stevie J his whole Christian name. They said Stephen Aaron Jordan. Penetrating. Caucasian man. 
Stevie was part of the Bad Boys production team, Hitman. They work, he worked for over 30 years. He produced many hit songs, won the Grammy, blah, 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 blah. As a young producer, I admired Stevie. Da, 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 da. He's saying he used Stevie in an effort to groom and make him engaged in lewd acts. Uh, Diddy went so far as to share a video of who he claimed to be Stevie. Bah, 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 bah. He said, uh, he said the thing, he said the person in the video looked like and sounded like Stevie J. I honestly believed it was him. Now, here's the funny thing. He said Diddy showed him that video. Remember in all the raids said that they took everybody's cell phones and all the computers and disk drive and stuff. Remember how they say Diddy keeps all these tapes he has? If that tape of Stevie J is real, the Fed should have got it because I doubt that Diddy deleted the uh, tape. Now, I do want to say this, right? I doubt Diddy deleted the tape. I do want to say this, though, right? Um, Stevie J is standing by his man. Uh, da -da 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 -da. He said, during my time living with Diddy, I personally witnessed, oh, he said, that it was a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. He said he personally witnessed these men in the entertainment industry and others visit his house and disappear into his bedroom for hours. Several of these men own record labels and have notable catchphrases like, and another one, and Maybach Music. I could provide those names at the court's request. Wait, who's Maybach Music? Is that Rick Ross? And another one, is that DJ Khalid? Oh gosh, okay. He talks about Cuba going junior. Where are we at? The distribution. Okay, so it goes into the distribution. We're gonna skip over that. We'll come back to it. I don't wanna get into this. Diddy advised him he does not pay for anything. Throughout my time living with Diddy, he made it clear that he did not spend his money on anything. He made it clear he had partnerships and relationships with very powerful individuals and organizations. And these individuals and organizations funded his lifestyle. So Diddy admitted he was broke. Diddy told me that he had a long-standing relationship with UMG, Lucian Charles Grange, and Ethiopia Haberman. He shared that he was creating love records. He informed Ethiopia and other label executives like L.A. Reid, um, that, saying Lucian, that Diddy intended to partner with L.A. Reid and his label, Hitco, but L.A. Reid informed him that he was negotiating the sale of the label. Diddy told me Ethiopia and Motown were a second option. Diddy informed me that he met Lucian Grange and Ethiopia to negotiate the terms of the partnership. Diddy told me that Lucian and Ethiopia agreed to partner with them to establish Love Records. As part of the partnership, they agreed to distribute the first and second albums. He informed me that UMG paid for Club Love, Chalice Recording Studios, and the yacht, which he charted from December 22nd to January 23. Little Rod says his attorney, that's I guess Tyrone Blackrum, informed him that UMG claims that they had a distribution deal with Diddy and that they agreed to pay him for any approved invoices for the creation of Love Album. I have to disagree with UMG's statements because Diddy never paid me or several producers I know who worked on the Love Album. Y'all, Diddy is going down. Diddy is going down. My counsel informed me that UMG claims that they did not pay for blank workers or sponsored any of the club love parties or writers camp. These claims have contradicted by the reality I saw with my own eyes. There were employees of UMG and Motown Records present at the writers camp at listening parties and other parties. I was told by Diddy that they were, that they were there and I saw them there. Diddy told me they were scouting for talent as it pertains to blank workers. They also paid for them. I have several videos of the Chalice Recording Studio sessions as well as the home recording sessions and there are blank workers and producers in that studio. The blank workers in these videos were the only, were the only individuals paid. So they're trying to say that Diddy, he had, Diddy had everybody working for him, but the blank workers, well, he had everybody, was using everybody's labor, but the blank workers, and this is in the lawsuit, were the only ones paid for this. The following are screenshots of the recording sessions that took place in Chalice Recording Studios. Again, there are girls sitting in the chairs. It looks like a studio session. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. He said this video was taken on January 29, 2023, inside Diddy's home located on Star Island. Oof. 
but there's more. Hold on, y'all. I think there's another video. Okay, so that's the one that was on Star Island. Okay, this one was, he said this video was taken on September 30th inside Chalice Recordio Studio. Justin Combs solicited the blank worker in this video. Oh my God. And you know what the funny thing is? They, the feds have probably already approached all these girls and got into their DMs and been like, yo, how much? You know what I'm saying? Again, y'all wanted receipts. He's saying he has everything to prove it. He's giving little screenshots of the videos. What's Diddy's team got to say? Besides leaking the bloggers and dumbass Twitter. I, no shade to Twitter because y'all know I love people on Twitter, but people in particular. Diddy bragged about having fun and not getting caught. In the recording, I can provide the court on multiple occasions, Diddy shared wild stories in his 30 years of the music industry. He shared how he would get things by force. That included record deals, signatures on contracts, sex acts with women and men, as well as the women of his enemies. He bragged about having, for instance, y'all pay it. Y'all listening? Hit that like button really quick. Let me put some, this is a lip gloss break, but hit that like button. Hit the like button, please. I would appreciate so y'all can help me grow. Growing is caring. Diddy bragged about having Daphne Joy, the child mother of a competing rapper, on payroll as one of his blank workers. Little Rod says he has this on tape and he has sworn to the court of law that he will provide this when they go to trial. I have a video of Diddy on a massage table receiving a massage from a professional masseuse while Daphne Joy is giving him a foot massage. Diddy bragged about shooting a bl blank in the face in 1999 in New York City and getting away with it. He bragged about departed attorney Johnny Cochran's savvy legal skills and ability to pay off witnesses through private investigators and other third parties. He bragged about having Jennifer Lopez carrying his bang bang into the club uh, the night of the shooting and the fact that he had so much power and influence over her at the time. He bragged about getting Shine to take the heat for the shooting and the and, and the fact that he paid Shine through a record deal with his good friend, L.A. Reid. He has Diddy on tape saying this. Diddy bragged about the power he has and the fact that he beat up record executive Steve Stout. He left uncontrollably as he talked about busting him in the head with a bottle of champagne in the chair. He bragged about beating up Gerald Rochney outside a nightclub in Hollywood. He also informed me that only poor people pay taxes. Listen to this. Diddy shared that it is a common practice. And this is all in the recording. Diddy shared that it was a common practice in the music industry to wire money from anonymous accounts overseas. That way, if there's ever a need to take care of a problem, it would never be traced back to him. These accounts are in Germany. Did he also share that he invests in many shell companies and provides funding for businesses like Wingstop? He said, I could share other things, but I do not feel comfortable putting them in this document. I'm willing to discuss them with the court under seal to preserve my Fifth Amendment rights. He says, I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States. Do you realize that if he is shown to be lying, the judge can throw him in jail for up to seven years. This is federal court. Do you realize the federal government can sue him? Do you realize Diddy can sue him into oblivion? The fact that he's declaring this lets me know he's 10 toes down. He said, I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States that the proceeding is true and correct. I understand that if I intentionally lie, I would be subject to punishment. Baby, let's go back into the rug. Little Rod is about to take Diddy down for money laundering, tax evasion. That's what got, that's why Rico laws were invented with the Italian mob and the Jewish mafia. Y'all, let's get it. But BMF knows. Let's talk about the rugs and distribution. On several occasions, Diddy and Farmy and the executives of the party in his home, right? Where Lucia, uh, uh, informed me that the executives at the parties in his home were Lucian Grange. Ethiopia Haberman and other town acquisition, uh, talent acquisition representatives of UMG and Motown. Diddy often left the parties when these executives appeared and took them to his bedroom. They will be gone for several hours. Although I saw who Diddy was referring to, I never personally met with or spoke 
to Lucian Grange or Ethiopia or every other any other executive who is present at these parties. I was prohibited from doing so. As meeting or being introduced to them was a privilege I would have to earn through loyalty and obedience to Diddy. Diddy personally informed me that these executives were present and also told me they came a talent scout. In addition, Diddy often switched his approach to force me to obey and comply with his demands. On multiple occasions, he would threaten me with physical harm. Did he threaten to eat my face and inform me he was willing to kill, oh, murk his own mother to get what he wanted so he wouldn't think twice about harming me? Now, mind you, he also witnessed the thing with G. Did he would also make me work out of this bedroom whenever he had gang members, uh, whenever he had gang members and rug dealers to visit him. I witnessed Diddy hand out guns from the hidden room in his bedroom closet. The individuals who received these guns were often dressed in black. Little Rod is saying under perjury that he, what Diddy would make him work out of his bedroom whenever he had gang members and drug dealers visit him. He witnessed Diddy hand out unregistered, unmarked guns from the hidden room in his bedroom closet. The individuals who received these guns were often dressed in black. Didn't the rage just say that there were hidden rooms and they found unregistered guns? Y'all, I don't know how y'all, well, not y'all, but mm. I've seen individuals bring bags of cash to Diddy's home. Diddy informed me that this money came from UMG. I witnessed known gang members at his home in LA and Miami be paid with stacks of cash he has in his hidden room in his bedroom closet. Yo, if this is true, that means that feds have all this on video. I've seen Diddy bring the cash out and place it on the bedroom table, bed, and couch. Other than Diddy, the only individual I witnessed enter the hidden room in his bedroom closet was KK. She was allowed to remove cash and rugs from the hidden room in his bedroom closet. During the 13 months I lived and traveled with Diddy, I witnessed KK openly order her assistants to keep Diddy high off of lace gummies and pills. I have a recording taken on the yacht that Diddy rented just before Christmas 2022 to shortly after New Year's Eve 2023. Y'all, he got it on tape. In this recording, you can hear Diddy coaching, oh, coaching comedian Amy Schumer how to rap. And KK is in the background instructing her staff to get Diddy's, right? Get Diddy's uh, laced narcotic gummies while Amy Schumer and her inbred face was on that yacht. Ew. How much did he pay people to have a freak off of Amy Schumer? That woman is vile. Inside and out. That's the first time I've seen a personality inside bleed out outside. KK was also, requ also required on... He says he has them on tape. KK also required all employees from the butler to the chef to the housekeeper to walk around with a pouch and fanny pack filled with Colombian dancing dust, GHB, E, marijuana gummies, and Tusi, a pink drug that was a combination of E and Co, you know. KK ordered and distributed all that stuff to Diddy and the celebrity guests who were present on this rented yacht and in his homes in LA, New York City, and Miami. On multiple occasions, KK forced me to carry Diddy's blank pouch against my will. I had to carry the pouch to the booby trap in Miami. Brendan Paul always carried the black pouch with him. I have videos and photos of this and can provide them in court. Isn't it funny that when you look at the TMZ raid, when the feds roll up on Brendan and them when they're getting on the private plane, not Diddy's, because Diddy's private plane was flying without him in it. If you zoom in, Brendan's wearing the black pouch. Brendan would transport the rugs through his carry-on luggage while flying with Diddy. Diddy informed us that the TSA does not check for narcs and other rugs in carry-on luggage. On several occasions, this is when you're flying private. Nobody please do this for, for coach. On several occasions, I witnessed Brendan Paul pack coke and luggage before taking international trips with Diddy. As the chief of staff, KK was instrumental in organizing and executing Diddy's criminal enterprise. Uh, KK had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the enterprise, Brendan Paul and DeForest Taylor. On the following dates, I witnessed either DeForest or Brendan or KK procure, transfer, and distribute E, all the stuff, by packing these substances in the carry-on luggage and going through TSA. November 22nd, 2022, December 22nd, 2022, uh, April 28th, 2023, and November 4th, 2023. The destinations for these trips were LA, 
California, Miami, St. Bartholomew, and of course, London, England. You guys, you guys, you guys, I, I'm being dead serious. What is Diddy going to say to this? You guys, Little Rod, people have been so focused on Little Rod's attorney that Diddy has Little Rod dead to rights. Dead to rights. I'm sorry, Little Rod has Diddy dead to rights. What is he going to actually say? What's he going to say? What is he going to say? What can, listen, so here's the thing with Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer is vile, but a quick sweep of Amy Schumer's Instagram, and I found the picture of Amy Schumer and Diddy actually chilling. I found the picture of Diddy and Amy Schumer actually chilling in St. Bart's. Hold on. This is December 31st, 2022. This is on the same trip that that girl, Gracie, was assaulted. Here we go. This is on the same trip that, hold on. Here it goes. Amy Schumer, my 10 best moments of 2022. All here with my love. At Diddy. Here it is. Right there. Anyway, there's also a few other things I want to bring to you guys' attention, right? Uh, there's a St. Barth video of Diddy and all his people walking around, including Young Miami and Christian. They put arrows and names. The video was uploaded to YouTube without arrows and names on December 28th, 2022. Crincy. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me, uh, let me airdrop this to myself. Thanks so much, Jamie. Let me airdrop this. I'm going to put this on the screen. For everybody saying, Little Rod's a clout chaser. Little Rod's a liar. That never happened. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Christian wasn't even there, baby. There is proof of all that. Let's get into this. Hold on really quick. Let me put another presentation on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen of the distinguished. Let's get this going. All right. So here we have. Let's see who we got. We got Quincy right there. I think I think that's young Miami. Hold on. We got more people. We got Carisha. Here go Carisha. Who's still messing with Diddy, by the way. Maybe. Shane letting that paycheck go. Mm. Here we got all the twins. Is that French Montana? I think that's French Montana in the pink shirt. That's KK, I believe, in the black. Yep, that's French Montana in the pink. Right? Those girls don't even pay Young Miami no mind. They were like, you not my mommy. Right? We also have the girls, Jesse, Delilah, and Chance all standing right there. Do we not? This is the video from St. Bart's that everybody said was a lie. Can it happen? What are you talking about? They weren't there. Right? Young Miami. Those girls don't mess with Young Miami at all. You not my mama. There go Little Rod right there. There's Little Rod. There is Little Rod right there in the baseball cap. Right? I think that guy, who's that guy? Santella, I think. Anyway, everybody is in that, uh, everybody's in that video. Everybody that he said was there. If you notice, there's a lot of little knapsacks. If you notice, KK was there, Centella was there, Brendan was there. They all got their knapsacks. They all got there. This is why he hired Bobby Sternum. This is why it is international crimes. Really quick, I want to say a special thank you to, um, uh, uh, yes, cup of coffee. Thank you, Trizzy Joe, for the super chat. I appreciate you. I don't know what's going on with YouTube, YouTube's live stream tonight. I'm struggling. Um, who said that? 
Somebody said, I smell Rico. If they can pop up on the screen. Potato Gun Camper said, I smell Rico, baby. I smell Rico too. Let me see if I can read this from somewhere else because YouTube is struggling right about now. Um, oh, Robin Silver, thank you so much. She said, get reporting from your auntie. Thank you so much, Robin Silver. Thank you for the generous super chat. Um, also, uh, Robin Silver, thank you for gifting super chats. Eva C said, hi, Tisa, my COD for camera. It seems harder to walk into the recording studio than it would be entering into a Fort Knox. Exactly. And they trying to act like, no, what are you talking about? We were just, no, 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 no. A man just came off the street. Let me try to say thank you for the rest of these super chats because baby, this is just getting too much. Di Something is going on with YouTube tonight. It took me forever to even get this super, this live stream to go up. Where are we at? Let me see. Do I have more super chats? I know I do. I just, ugh, I can't get to them. Did, YouTube's live stream is acting up. My screen is freezing up and everything when I'm trying to scroll through the chat. Is y'all chat acting okay? Is it? Oh my gosh. This is just so frustrating. It's messing up my vibe. Anyway, you guys, listen. Everybody sent me a super chat. I will thank you on the next live. I'll just have to scroll through and take screenshots of everybody because I can genuinely, I, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. They suck. Okay, hold on. I just missed one. Ugh, the screen is over. Anyway, listen, everybody sent me a super chat. When YouTube gets this issue uh, sorted out because there, nothing's coming up, but then some stuff is coming up. On my next live stream, I'll try to go live to your super chats out loud. I just wanted to take a minute and bring y'all what is, is it the truth? I don't know. I'm telling you what little Rod put in front of a court of law under penalty of perjury and in federal investigations, penalty of perjury is very, very serious. You're looking at up to seven years in jail. You're looking at having to pay all lawyers fees. And I'm sure Diddy's lawyers fees at this point are already up to 6 million. You're looking at a lot of stuff. The fact that even though Diddy's team seems to be waging a war through TMZ, leaking stuff to bloggers, doing all this stuff, but at the end of the day, Little Rod has turned to. Y'all talking about, we want facts, not these accusations. Don't be, dis don't be dissuaded by these terms of art that Diddy's legal team are using. Everything is an accusation until it's proven in the court of law. Everything. Even saying somebody bang-banged or deleted somebody is an accusation until it is proven in th inside of a court of law. Um, listen, yeah, so, it, yeah, so listen, you guys, uh, just whatever. Anyway, you guys, let me go, because YouTube is getting on my last nerve. I'll try to jump back on live tonight. If not, it's going to have to be pre-recorded videos, but I got some more tea. Um, even people, uh, going for a plea deal, but you know what? I'm going to do that on a video. Okay. I wanted to talk about this, but YouTube really got me ready to rip my hair out. Listen, um, uh, listen, perjury for seven years. Come on. You can't stay in jail longer than seven years. Like, you know, um, why are Diddy and Rod dressed alike? I don't know. I do want to say that, um, I don't know why they dressed alike. I do honestly, though, want to say that, yeah, you can't tell me that a federal indictment is not coming down. I'm going to try to find out if the grand jury has been assembled because that's what I really want to know. Anyway, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments, right? Um, yeah, the video's lagging on and off. Let me go. YouTube's tripping. So we're going to have to go to recorded stuff today and tomorrow we'll do a live stream, okay? I'll talk to y'all later. It's not me this time. It really is YouTube. Something's wrong with their live stream thing. They even had a little warning. But it don't matter. Y'all got the tea. Do with it what y'all want. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Hit the like button on your way out.